Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Merry Thanksgiving. Yes. Happiest of all days of turkey consumption. If you're watching this, the day that we release it on the YouTubes, it's Happy Black Friday, I guess. And you're a piece of shit if you're participating. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. Doug dropping some hot takes early. Why? Why is is the world, are, are the deals that good? That you gotta go and fight for consumerism. I feel like slotty right now. I'm just like You gotta wait till Cyber Monday and feed the Amazon machine, Doug. Right? Cyber Monday and then get your favorite hentai at fifty percent off, you know? Bingo. See, this guy gets it. He's done it. Zinny says meow meow. Hey Zinny. Hope you're well. Um yeah, I just Black Friday is oh I've never participated. I've never physically gone to a store and be like, I'm camping out. It's time to get that TV that I wanted. That's, you know, whatever. No. It's, right. Even when I was younger and I had time, I'm like, this is a waste of time. <laughs> I, we used, my mom, grandma, and aunt used to go. I'm I'm fairly certain that when, like, we were younger, younger, they used to go. And I want to say one year I tagged along. I cannot, I don't have vague memories, possibly because I got a concussion that day. But uh yeah i just i it was never something i never understood it i just never you see all the you know all the all the videos and shit i know that's not everywhere but it's it's not a pleasant day to be out i'll tell you that much you know even if you yeah. don't have the uh even if you're not a part of a viral stampede you're still probably not having a great time out there yeah i i I, I remember a couple of years ago i was back in missouri and it was around this time i was with uh hanging out with my family and i went to walmart to pick up some stuff and there were already people that were lining up in the stores i'll tell you your first problem there going to walmart in missouri (laughs) i mean that's a twofer right there yeah and people there was like sections of the store where they were like if you want to wait in line for this and people were already lining up i'm like it's six o'clock yeah like I mean, or I was—it was like I don't know what it was on Thanksgiving. I was going there to pick up a couple things, yeah, I think, or whatever. Start lining up the day before, yeah. And people were just already. I'm like, guys, it's not even like they're evening. Camp, they camp out at that shit. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, and for it's what? And to, to, yeah, it's just it's it's always bothered me. It's always been gross to me that it's like this is what you're going to do to get buy something. <laughs> like, I, the, the amount of times, like on Amazon Prime Day or whatever, I always show up and I'm like, what is it? Do I want? Like I, I will browse through and I'm like, I don't I don't have anything in mind. I'm also the worst to buy actually, I'm I'm either the worst or the easiest to buy gifts for because I'm okay. easily my my bar is low. Yeah. You buy me some food or you get me something just some little trinket, I'm like, Yay! I don't need anything. Like I, I'm very easy yeah. to buy for in that regard. You know, at the same time I'm just they're like, What do you want? I'm like, I don't know. Right. I don't I don't need anything. It's like it's not about what you need. I'm like, Yeah, but that's how practical Doug processes it. So I'm a pain in the ass that way. When I was younger, younger, uh, it was easy for me to like go through. I'd just take a catalog, just start circling shit or dogger the pages. As I got older, I fell into that where my mom's like, well, I need some ideas for myself, for grandma and grandpa, for our, you know, aunt, uncle, like we need some ideas. And I'm like, ah, cash, just, just stop. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like I truly don't know gift cards so I can buy my own things when I'm ready. Cause I don't have anything in mind at the moment. And yeah. I, I know that's a shit thing to say, but like, I, yeah, I've never been the same. Like, uh, the Amazon day comes around and I'll do the same thing. I'll hop on and I'll peruse, but I'm like, I don't feel the need to just like that ravenous need. To, uh, I've got to pick it up cause it's a deal. And I don't know if that's just because I don't like a lot of clutter around my house. You know what I mean? Like, I want to tell you a story, please, Doug. I want tell to tell you a story. a story about a friend of mine who right. has a problem. And this friend of mine, in my opinion, uh, is the person that falls prey to, well, it's on sale, so we need to buy it. Mm-hmm. Regardless of whether or not you need it, regardless of how much you already have in stock, I'm going to give you a number that is not made up. All right? Okay. I want you to guess <laughs> right now 
I want you to guess how many boxes of Crispix cereal this person so currently specific. has. I want you to ask. I want you to guess how many boxes of Crispix cereal does this person currently have in their pantry? Right. What you need to follow it up with is, and whatever you guess, you're wrong. It's more. You, uh, you tell I'm going to say uh, 10. Too low. No. 20? Too high, but just by a bit. It's 17. Oh 17 boxes of, it's Crispix? Crispix. Yes. 17 boxes of Crispix. Cereal. It's Crispix. Why am I not, why am I blanking on this? Oh, okay. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. 17 boxes. Ask, ask how many people are in the family, Justin. How, how many, many people, people are, are they like feeding? How many people are they feeding, Justin? Go on, ask. Oh, you're asking me? Yeah, how many? Five, hopefully? Nope. Them and one other person. So three? Nope, just th that person oh, and one oh, other person. Them two. as a couple plus one other as a child. No, just two Eight, people. Oh, two people, 17 boxes. Of now, let me ask you this. Is Crispix a favorite cereal of this person? Not that is I'm Crispix aware of. Like, a, like, oh, it just reminds me of childhood and it's so yummy. Not that I'm aware of. Oh, man. Yeah. What are we, what are we doing there? That's a, At that's one a point bar. in time, this person had nine bottles of mustard. <laughs> so let me ask this. And I ask this with no, uh, with no preconceived, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, are they one of these uh, preppers? Are they a doomsday prepper? Nope. Just so do you know the rationale behind why so much Crispix and so much mustard? The only thing I know is that the only thing I can guess is that they see something on sale. It's a deal. And they're like, yeah. well, we have to get this because it's on sale. But and why just Crispix? Like, do they not see like, does, do Fruit Loops never come on sale? I have no idea. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. I've got a lot. I feel like I'm. And I've so personally seen this multiple times. Yeah. I've gone there and been like, what is. And that's just one of the cereals that they have, Justin. There are others. Like the amount of questions that I have are mounting. Oh, and I currently. have no answers for you. Yeah. I, like I, I want to do a follow up interview with this individual. Yeah. There will. Nothing will satisfy it. That's, it's like watching a TikTok. Right. That has like something you're like, how did this start? Right. What's the resolution? You'll never know. No. It'll just the get resolution. you. And it'll gaslight you. And they're like, what yeah. happened? And then you never know. The resolution is always one more box of Crispix. It's on sale, bitch. Yep. What am I going to do? Not get it? It's like, yeah, you right. could try. You should get through you the other just... 17 boxes before you buy any more. Plus what other cereal you have in there. I mean. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. That, yeah. that puts me I, like, yeah. I, Practical Doug is oddly enough yeah. at peace with that. Because Practical really? Doug has been dealing with this for many years. Yeah. So that's Practical fair. Doug's like, well, there's this is an unanswerable <laughs> cannot solve this equation. Cannot so be this, solved. Crispix broke Practical Doug. Uh, th there's just there's no or, answer or to at it. At least succumb, uh, Practical Doug succumbed to it. I also looked at this as like there's that, whatever answer there is, I'm not gonna be happy with it. It's not gonna <laughs> suffice. So it's right. like just let it go. It just, just it is. Yeah. I don't have to see it every day. <gasps> Yeah. So I don't have to witness it every day. So, you know, just I won't do it. I thought I was going to overshoot with 10. I'm like, five is my guess, but it has to be a ridiculous number. So I'll say 10. Yeah. 17. Oh boy. 17. There's been other things I've seen just in there, and I'm just like, yeah. Okie dokie. Well, adios. And <laughs> that's that. Well, goodbye. Have you ever went over at this individual's house? Have you ever been offered a bowl of Crispix? Nope. See, that seems like a very mixed, missed opportunity. I feel like this person needs to consistently have a bowl of puppy chow, needs to consistently have... Uh, With um, a side homemade, of mustard. Right, exactly. Or, or homemade, uh, um, not check. Well, yeah, essentially checks mix. Trail mix, yeah. With, trail mix, but with a mustard, like a mustard to yeah. tossed in mustard. Right. Yeah, exactly. They, they need to have an assortment of snacks always at the ready with Crispix involved. Yeah, it's... It's a miss. It's wild. Yeah. It's wild. And I'm like, 
my goodness. I just don't, yeah, I've never, I don't know. And if it's, I don't know if it's because Beth and I are just so accustomed to apartment living, but we, we, we shop for what we're going to make essentially. Like I don't, we don't have a lot of back stock of stuff of like, if we're like, you know, if we just ran a wild, you know, wild hair, it's like, Oh, let's make chicken and rice. We're like, do we have it? You know, usually we have to think ahead. We're like, okay, so this week we'll do that. And you know, um, I, I just, I can't imagine just having a backstock. I'm so, so not used to living that way. Yeah. Maybe that will change when we get a house. I don't know. I'm the same way where every week I make a list. I plan for every yeah. meal I'm going to make for the week. Dinners, you know, lunches, my breakfast stuff, all that sort of stuff. I plan for it and I go and buy all the stuff for it. Some yeah. things I'll have a, like, you know, I go to Costco every week and I'll buy some things in bulk. So, you know, I just have them available. Yeah. Um, you know, like I'll buy a package of, you know, four package, you know, it's like one giant package that has four separate packages of broccoli that are frozen. I'm like, I will be using these at some point. And, you but know, that's the thing. if yeah. it's something that you consist, like if you have broccoli at almost every dinner, mm -hmm. then that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if it's something that you're using consistently, again, if this person had bowls of Crispix out in different, made in different methods and they were just like, this is my favorite cereal. That would make sense to me. Yeah. Cause they're going to burn through the boxes. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a mystery. It's something Man, we'll never. I won't be able to focus on anything else now. <laughs> That's a challenge. Ruined. Challenge. Focus now. You know. I Edge. would lick the pole. You know. I got a clean version this I, time. I don't know that you did. Good for you. I stuck I to my saying, word. I don't know how that's relevant in this moment, but good for you for pulling it out. Whatever. You know, I used it in the stream the other night. Someone goes, Justin. <laughs> Justin's here. <laughs> I love it. Speaking of streaming, uh, did you know you can check us live on YouTube? Uh, we uh, stream our podcast Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central at uh, mindgap.com. No. Uh, wow. Okay. But I was like, I almost said that you wrong. I'm like, you did. YouTube.com yeah. slash mindgap podcast. Uh, I also do a video game stream uh, currently now on Fridays uh, at 8 p.m. Central. Although there won't be any this week because of the holidays. So just hang on to your shorts for that. Uh, check us out there. And while you're here, uh, if you watch this live stream where you see our videos and things like that, Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, it's free, and it helps us a lot on our journey. We're up to 246 subscribers now. Boo, 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 boo. Nice. Chugga, 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 and along. Uh, if you feel like throwing some you know, money our way to help support our cause, which is a noble one, uh, head over to patreon.com. You can help us out there, or go, oh, I'm sorry, patreon.com slash mindgappodcast, and check us out at redbubble.com for some of our merch. It's good stuff. And then also, in the description down below, you will find a link to our Discord. Come join the Mind Gap crew. Uh, be a part of the meme channels. Be a part of the podcast discussions. Be a part of the video game nights and the events that we put together. We'd love to have you, as long as you're not a dick. So think about mm -hmm. that before you click, because it's really important. But go, check out Don't all that stuff. Don't be a dick before you click. That's right. Hit, if you're going to click, expect a dick, you know? I think that's what... In the proper channels, yes. Yeah, I mean, anything's possible. You know what I mean? Which I don't, still don't know which is the dick channels, but it's because... Oh. Very few are, of them. Every channel has got a potential to be the dick. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to look in the right place. Uh, yeah. So, <coughs> gang, if you don't know, if you don't know, if you're asking yourself, hey, Doug, why are you used to stream on Saturdays for the video game? Why, what gives? Why are you streaming on Fridays? Well, it's because I am currently hosting a D&D &D session with myself. Justin. I just love this. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like the perfect yeah. fit. Um, I wanted to put something together, and I maybe will at some point. That's like it's time for a D and D update. Oh, <laughs> shit. Ah! Ooh, you know, and just have some audio things. <laughs> um, Finished with machine. Exactly, because yeah. that's totally, totally. You know, <laughs> why no Saturday nights? These precious. <laughs> Let me do that again in the, in the right voice. Yes. Why no Saturday nights? These precious. That's about the only accent I can do well is Gollum. You yeah, know? It's good. that was good, actually. Thank you. Uh, because I'm hosting D&D, &D, uh, and I'm doing it as a very special group with Justin, with Eric. Uh, you remember Eric from the uh, Dungeon Karens, if you, uh, you know, uh, check those out. Also, Slotty is a part of that, as well as, well as Eric's wife, Kaya, and, of course, Drew, uh, Justin's business partner. And uh, four-fifths of these folks are D&D &D newbies. So I designed something specifically for them to take them on their very first adventure. We did the tutorial, which, as you've heard me talk about before, took a little bit longer than I expected because they got into shenanigans, wonderful. and it was wonderful. <laughs> but we began in earnest last weekend. We started yes. officially 
the session, which I have been very loosely calling a one-shot. A one-shot means you get it done in one session. There's no way this would get done in one session, but I'm calling it their mini-adventure because it's not yes. a campaign, but it has a mini-adventure. So we began in earnest. Um, Justin, based on your experiences with D&D, you know, mm-hmm. leading up to this and, and, and everything like that, how did this first session go for you? This first session was a blast. Uh, it went way better than I expected. Um, training wheels were off, so to speak. Um, I was very excited when we got into combat this session because the last time we got into combat in the in the um, the what we call the tutorial mm-hmm. run through or whatever. Um, that was it that dragged on quite a long time and it was very slow and i'm like this doesn't feel like when they do it on crit i'm like it's just this doesn't feel like the combat that i've bore witness to on other you know times i've seen dnd which is minimal in fairness but i'm like i don't know man this is this is gonna take us a very long time to get through this and then that second time we went into combat it was amazing once you have the fundamentals down how you just poof, you just blow through it, and I was like, "All right, this is this is pretty badass." Because people were making decisions, they were casting spells, and they were making reindeer pop up, and there was things happening. I had a flarfin explode next to someone's head. You know, it was yeah. great. So that was that was a lot of fun. I think the hardest thing still, and you warned us, warned me at least about this. That's the biggest difference between what we're doing now and D&D Light, when we were the Dungeon Karens, is when he, you're like, you told me, you're like, I'm going to say to you, okay, what do you want to do? And you can do anything. And I'm like, all right, got it. Not really comprehending it. And then we did Dungeon Karens, and it was like, cool, very linear. And then we opened up, and you dropped us in the back room of a bakery, and you said, okay, what do you want to do? And everyone kind of sat there, myself included. I'm like, oh, wait, like, really? What do we want to do <laughs> this? It, it's such a weird, it's so weird to just have complete control. Like, I could have said, I want to read a book. And you would have been like, cool. So what book Ash, are you is reading? Reading, Ash is reading a book. What's yeah. everyone else doing? Like, mm-hmm. in, anything, you know? Yeah. I, I could have walked out into the front of the bakery if I wanted to. Yeah. And that would have had, like, it, it's still a mind trip for me. I'm still to right now where this happened on Saturday. Mm-hmm. I'm still right now thinking of other ways that that adventure could have gone. Yeah. I'm like it, anything could have happened, you know? Yeah. Which is also when exciting I, and I terrifying. Off, it is when I split off. When I, so in the campaign, I uh, we were being followed as we were going through the streets of Baldur's Gate and we came upon a, uh, a uh, alchemy shop uh, and I, I, put everyone in there and I snuck, I have a sneaking ability and I snuck back around to interrogate the person. And as soon as I kind of pushed everyone into the alchemy thing and then peeled off, I went, this is either going to go very well, or it's going to be a train wreck of a decision. And I got very nervous, very nervous. Cause I'm like, I'm, I don't have Eric to lean on. I lean on Eric very heavily. Cause he's very good at just analytical thinking. I'm like, I don't have anyone else to lean on here. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. It's very brave of you to do that, just both as your character and as you as a player. It was very fun to watch. Well, I'm like, then, I'm like, he's going off on his own. Let's see, let's yeah. see what happens. <laughs> and I love that everyone, I was, thank you to everyone else who was cool with it. Yeah. And I felt guilty because I'm just like, oh man, I feel like I stole the spotlight on this. And like, it was, everyone else is over here and I decided to go over here. And so that's the rest of the episode I was, I was like, I'm going to pull back and let other people make decisions because I don't want to feel like I don't want them to think I'm running this. Yeah. It didn't feel that way, at least not to me. So no, no, absolutely. Well, I think that's the thing, though. Again, I'm so not used to being able to do side things and tangents mm-hmm. because of the dungeon Karens. Yeah, it's just a way different experience playing tr- true D and D. And I gotta yeah. say, it's fucking fun. I get the draw. Yeah, I absolutely get the draw. Now. Thank God we have. What are the things we have? The D and D Beyond. D and D Beyond, yeah. And the other, th- like, yeah. If Let's if roll. it worked for those helpers, I, I probably, wouldn't even suggest it to you. To I wouldn't you. be doing this. Yeah, it's no. just it's it is way too much. It was almost too much going through D and D Beyond building yeah. the character. That well, was, some people that was, are purists and they're like, oh. no, it's got to be 
you got to hand write on your sheets and you oh, got to roll man. physical dice and we've got to physically yeah. be in person or it's it's not it's not real and i'm like yeah. i've only done this digitally because it's more convenient and Proximity, i feel like yeah. i think it's as it's, it's cool as I guess it would be to build the maps and have miniatures and things like that, like that's a that's a big commitment, you know, money and storage wise. I prefer digital stuff to, you know, yeah. I don't know. It just seems more interesting that way. So for me, anyway, I've never yeah. done it in person. So look, I would I would love to if there's ever an opportunity to sit down and actually like have all your die there and have your little roll. Like I would love to sit in a circle and do that. <clears throat> but I would st I would need to be with people who are very comfortable holding yeah. hands because I, again, with when it comes to all the nuance, it's just so fucking much to know, man. It is. There's it is. so much. And next time, you can be the dungeon master, Justin. How about no, that? that? That gives me uh, irritable bowels. I don't <laughs> like that. And it's funny because the first time I played, I'm like, I want to be the dungeon master. Like that was my first thing is like, I want to run this. Like I just no. because I was so curious how it worked behind the scenes, and I was like, oh, what's what can I throw out there to tell a fun, help these people tell a fun story? And that was immediately yeah. what I wanted to do. I was like, I want to do this. <laughs> the thing is, it's funny because like I'm I I get excited about you know doing like making a movie or writing a script. Thinking about putting something like this together turns my insides upside down because I'm like I. <laughs> First off, I think I'm so unfamiliar with the mechanics of everything still yeah. that it's it's still a little foreign to me. But at the same time, I look at what you're put together and I'm like, how does Doug know what's coming next? This is insanity. We could do anything and he's got to be ready for it. Yeah, I know. This is, this is chaos. This is too much chaos for even Justin. That's what I thought the first time too. And I was like, so you obviously have to plan this out. And they're like, no, no. Other DMs, I'm watching stuff. They're like, no, I have no idea how this is going to go. I'm like, that's impossible. There's no way. And they're like, yes. Yeah. And then you get comfortable with it. You're like, no, no, see what happens, you know? Right. Because <laughs> so the tell my story. First thing is when I'm everything that happened, I'm like, I'm in the back of my head, I'm thinking, is Doug manipulating this to funnel us to a specific location? Or in some ways, yes. Good? You know what I mean? Like, but I'm also giving you an opportunity to find your own way there. So, yeah. Which yeah. it's just, yeah. The whole, the whole, everything about it is, uh, is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's, it's fun. So I, I definitely recommend. If you've ever been curious about D and I would recommend dipping your toes into it some way, shape, or form because it's definitely, at least thus far, is proving uh, it's proving to be a good time. So, well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, and I look forward to more things. And my goal with this is to turn it into a uh, a mini series. Um, basically, take it, add some you know sound design to it, streamline it so it's not just a straight recording because it'll. You know, some of the stuff probably isn't super enjoyable to listen to is just like a listener. As you're playing it, you don't mind. But if someone's listening yeah. to it, you're like, wow, Doug really doesn't know the rules. Um, you know, so instead, we'll just streamline it, you know, do some narration, have some fun with it, make it a fun adventure. That's kind of like my goal to do with it, which I think yeah. would be really, really fun. So I have say, noticed when you're like when when we do stuff like uh, like when I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to rage and you're like, cool. So what does that look like? And I'm, I'm realizing now that you're getting audio bites that we can that actually can use later. I'm just doing that for you. I want you oh, to okay. tell me what it looks like. I don't want to dictate what it looks like. It's your character. You tell yeah. me what happens when you rage and wild magic surges through you and where it comes from. It gives you yeah. I feel like it's originally that's what I did. I'm like, all right, you do this. But I'm like, wait, no, you tell me. I, there's this other DM uh, on Critical Role who guess, does, does a guest DM and she does a wonderful job of being like, you tell me. What that right. looks like, what that sounds like. I'm like, oh, you're empowering the player to That's describe cool. it, you know, which I think is kind of cool. So I, yeah. I, I kind of like that, you know, and sometimes if you need a little extra, I add a little bit extra flavor to it. But for the most part, I'm like, you described how you murdered that guy just fine. I got nothing to add. Let's move on. Right. Great job. Well to go. You know, I think yeah. That's cooler. But yeah, like, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can find with it. But I'm looking forward to, to putting that together. I think that'll be fun. So absolutely. Be patient, y'all, but that'll be coming. So he's a coming. Don't worry he's, about it. He's a coming. Yay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Justin, uh, you're a guy who has run a, run a couple of marathons. I have. Yes. And from my understanding, you also used to smoke. That is correct. So there's a guy, a uh, marathon runner who chain smoked while running uh, the marathon in under three and a half hours. Uh, tell me, how is this possible? Well, not only did he do one, but he's done like five or six 
where he's chain smoked and he sets records. Yeah. <laughs> I think he did this one in like, it was sub three and a half, right? I think so. I'm trying to yeah. find the actual. Sub three and a half hours, I think. It was, I think it was something like 326 or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It, it was it was ridiculous. I, so look, he's 50, saw, 50 year old too. Like he's right. He's fifty. Right. He's not. He's not like a twenty one year old spring chicken. Yeah. I uh, running the mayor, and I'm I'm not uh, I'm not a runner by trade. You know, I, I haven't run all like through high school and was in track and fit. I I was late to the game running, so I had a hard enough time just just getting over the finish line on those those two marathons. It was very painful two of the hardest things I've ever done and very rewarding, but I cannot fucking imagine chain smoking and running a marathon and doing it sub three and a half. Like that is absolute fucking bonkers to me. Um, I can't imagine just like chain smoking and walking for three and a half hours. Like, no, you you know, because most people can't do it is the thing. This is a, this is a freak. This is a superhuman freak. The, the worst part, man, was when I was smoking because I would like at my worst, I was never a, a like I, I roomed with people who would maybe a pack a day. I would do maybe a half a pack a day. So I was on the lighter side of smoking. But even when I like would get drunk and you really want to light up, if I did go through a pack of cigarettes uh, in, in a day or so, like I f- I felt like such garbage the next day. And anyone who tells you they don't is lying. They, yeah. they, it just makes you feel you wake up, you feel like you licked a cat, like you're you just ugh, like the feeling in your mouth and it's just an ashtray, your lungs hurt. Then you take that first drag the next day and you're like, okay, everything's better. again. <laughs> Back to normal, baby. <laughs> Back to normal. Ah, oh, little hair of the dog. Um, but yeah, I cannot fucking imagine running 26.2 miles and then chain smoking a fucking pack of cigarettes that just... Uh, yeah. Look, and the other thing is, okay, that's it, it's wild. He was able to do it. Also, you, you, so he's an idiot. <laughs> he's, I mean, what? You know, like I, I, I'm of two minds of this. There's part of me that's just like, all right, great, he did this, and he's gonna. There's another part of me that wonders: Is he offsetting the smoking by running? Is it just canceling it out? Like, he's not exactly he, how it works. Is he, is he net neutral right now? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's yeah. Carbon, carbon neutral, neutral. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are uh, your thoughts on it i mean i mean as someone who smoked and ran marathons ben. yeah uh <laughs> someone who's nailed both of those um i i i'm just trying to practical doug is just being like i i've jogged yeah you know at one point you know i i was in track and i ran 400 meter dashes and things like that and and whatnot and the idea of like the, the act of running and breathing has a rhythm to it. I can only imagine as you're doing that and also being like, <sighs> and like smoking, like it can't right. be, it can't be that enjoyable. Like, you know, no, it can't be like, I, you're gasping for oxygen. Yeah. And then you're shoving smoke down your throat. Yeah. It said, uh, he goes by the name uncle Chen, which is the perfect name. Um, showed him running with a cigarette in his mouth while, you know, <laughs> while running. Um, yeah. And he, he play, he finished 574th out of more than 1500 runners. I think that's the thing to me. If you want to think if this guy did this in place last and right. just be like, "Oh, look at this goofy guy." He's just like, "Yeah, fuck you guys and your exercise. I'm going to do what I want." But this guy's like actually relatively decent at this. Like he's he's running decent times for a marathon. <laughs> So you're running, sorry, just if you run a three and a half, a three hours and 30 minute marathon pace, you're running eight minutes per mile for 20. Like, think about, think about that. Like I could, when I was in peak condition and I, I could, I could, I could knock out four miles in about seven and a half minutes per mile. Right. And that was, if I was like, absolutely like falling over myself, like road runner, like, mm-hmm. you know, Wiley Coyote, my legs were just spinning. I can't imagine running a, a marathon. Like, you're booking it. Now, I understand that's not world record setting times or anything, but, like, 3.30 is no joke. Like, yeah. you're hoofing it. Eight minutes a mile for 26 miles is that's no solid. fucking joke. You are hoofing it. Yeah. That's that's tough, man. Yeah. That's- doesn't make any sense. I don't understand how he's doing it. And to your point, like, when you're sucking in oxygen, but you've just got a cig hanging out of your mouth. And yeah. You just- 
Yeah. That's that's so crazy. A man. one dart sitting right there in your lips. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't know, man. Like it's I, I he's, mean he's not doing this for like nothing in the article or anything said it like it was it was for uh a stunt or he's making money off. Like this is no. just who he is. He's just doing his thing. Yeah. He's just I don't he's know. just doing it. I'm like yeah. I, I think it would suck to run next to him. I'd be like, come on, man. Imagine? Come on. If, if he was a pacer, he just had the thing that everyone had to follow to hit that pace, and you're yeah. just like, oh. like fuck, come on, man. He's yeah. just well, because that also leads you to believe that he's got a lighter tucked away somewhere, too. You know? Well, he's got a he has to slow down to light the thing, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously, just you know, hold on. I think I saw a picture of him lighting yeah. it. That's wild. Yeah. That's absolutely wild. I, I find it very entertaining because he's also a pretty decent runner at the same time. It's just it's I the juxtaposition of those two things to me is very hilarious. It's, yeah. I find it endlessly entertaining that that's what, uh, that's what he's doing. It's just like, Hey, I'm pretty good. And also, you know, fuck you. <laughs> it's like that scene in, uh, um, old school where, uh, Vince Vaughn's like doing the iron cross and he's got yep. like a cigarette. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, just, I don't know. Something about doing a very, impressive feat of strength and athleticism, but then right. also doing something incredibly unhealthy is very funny to me, you know? Yeah. And there, there was uh, like stories of in football in the early days, like d- during halftime around the bench, the players would right. just be lighting up cigarettes, you know, while they're like, all right, good play. All right. Next, next series is what we're going to do. They're like pointing yeah. with like the cigarette in their hand. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, if I was a, uh, if I was a marketing exec at, at, at camel or whatever, you know, uh, marble like i would i'd be like get this guy a fucking deal we're right. signing you know it's, like, it's it, it reminds me that uh you remember the old uh john belushi snl commercial with the cho- little chocolate donuts no i don't think i remember that it, it was like it was it was essentially a parody on a wheaties commercial <laughs> and it was it was john belushi in a tight runner's unitard and he was he was he had a cigarette in his hand just like uh he was supposed to be this big athlete he's like you know when I train, I make sure that I have little chocolate donuts at my breakfast table. And he would he would eat it and then take a drag of the cigarette. It's like little chocolate donuts give me the energy necessary to da 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 da. And it showed him on the on the on the track and field track like doing the pull, just fat, funny Belushi. Yeah. But this this gives me those vibes where you're just like this guy is just like I run marathons. Yeah. And I smoke the cool, easy smoke of camel cigarettes that's why i was you know looking back on it too like the there were snicker commercials for a lot of athletes were like when there's a hunger inside you and there's someone doing soccer like oh man when i'm done working out i reach for a snickers i'm like really is that what you go for the peanuts and the protein that i need yeah like what and the nougat like and the sugar the pure sugar now listen i have post-workout shakes that are pretty high in sugar content, but the idea, you know, it's also got a lot of protein. It's got bananas, you know, like the sugar content comes from the honey that I put in it, you know, and everything. But the idea of like, Hey, give me a Reese's or give me a, give me a payday bar. Cause that's got all the nuts. I need the protein. It's like, what? (laughs) Well, before, so now marathon runners have like, they're either the gel packs or the, 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 the gummies, the running gummies. Mm -hmm. And really all it is, is it's supposed to just like shoot up your glucose. So you, you get that little boost of energy that can carry you down. So, and the way it was explained to me, uh, when I was training for it, a guy was like, look, the minute you start running, it's going down, your energy level is just going to decrease. And so this isn't going to solve it. This is just going to pick it up. So it decreases slightly less, but it, by the end of it, doesn't matter how many of these you put in your mouth, you're going down. Like your energy, you're going to be tanked by the end. Yeah. Essentially you are for temporarily replacing a little bit of energy. It's still burning away. You're not, yeah, you're not getting anything back. Disposable. And it's pure sugar glucose. Like it just, it's that quick hit to make you maybe get through like another two, three miles before you got to like, uh, but so a lot of these, and they work, like they're great. I, I I use them. But Beth always told me before those came out and became a commodity in the running world, she and her sister, when she when they were training for their marathons, they would just have Snickers in their pockets. And they would, and I'm like, really, it it does make sense. Like if you are just looking for a quick sugar boost to help you push through another mile. So I don't know. Again, like, is that where Snickers is? I didn't uh, see it as a recovery meal, you know, like, boy, after my workouts, you know what I like to do? 
have a Snickers. And that's how it was always. If I'm building lean muscle and I need protein. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's the best way to get protein is a fucking Snickers bar. It's like, what? That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. And then all these athletes were like, well, there's a hunger inside you. And like, yeah, Snickers. This is what I reach for. It's like, what? No, you don't. That's crazy. Yeah. It's wild when you think of how far we've come in nutrition by itself. Oh, absolutely, for, yeah. for, you know, that's yeah. a lot of times when people try to compare different eras of sport. Like, oh, man, if this guy played blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we know so much more about just training and recovery now. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That anyone from the modern age would probably beat the shit out of them just sheer because of that by itself. Absolutely. They're, yeah. they're, they're putting their, their body in the best possible state to be effective versus back then. We're like, hey, man. <laughs> I heard someone say their dad uh, was an Olympic lifter. And like, so dad, like, you know, what'd you do, you know, to like nutrition wise? Like, what did you do? He's like, we ate steak. He's like, steak? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We used to have steak. And he's like, every day he's like, yeah, we need steak. Holy get, shit. Got to get that protein. He's like, oh my God, dad, that's it? He's like, yeah, steak. That's what yeah. we ate. It's like, yeah. that's, that's what we had. Got to eat Beef. steak. They it's didn't know anything. Yeah. He didn't know any different. It's probably like that's, raw eggs and steak, probably. You know, that's what. Well, it's it's like when you talk about anyone from from the like the '90s when they talk about you know getting in either weightlifting or the action stars when they had to cut and they would always talk about like oh I hate you know got to eat my my chicken and rice you know yeah. my boiled chicken and my white rice it's very plain and that's this and this and and a lot of a lot of people are talking about like look it's not you you don't have to I think Center even did a thing on it where they're like this isn't your this isn't your dad's you know, diet. This is not, you don't have to do chicken and rice. We've come so far beyond that nowadays. Yeah. You can have stuff with flavor and you can cook it different ways. You can get the same nutrients and you don't yeah. have to boil chicken. Yeah. I, I, I know that's, yeah, that's, that's definitely uh I, I remember seeing old infomercials where it's like, are you trying to build lean muscle? It just shows a guy in black and white getting up in his sweats, cracking a bunch of raw eggs in a glass and then just drinking it. I was like, <laughs> Why wouldn't you just cook them? Like, I don't understand why you have to eat them raw. Yeah. Like, what? What? what's the benefit of the raw egg versus it's the cooked just, egg? Are you burning off nutrients? Like, Right. It's a it's a quicker way to get it in, Doug. It, I think I think that's a throwback to a Rocky, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Austin Reno! What's Got up, milk. buddy? Got milk. Um, I can't imagine drinking a whole glass of raw eggs. No. I think I'd probably Absolutely barf. Not. I feel like we should try it now, though. Oh no! I want to. I want to see us attempt this. No. How many I mean, do you think you could drink before you would let boy, it? Boy, this wow! What a great thing! Well, how many can you drink before you barf? Like that sounds terrible. That sounds exactly like something we do. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Like we may have the soundboard of some morning radio, you know, shock jocks, but yeah. we're we're better than that. Well, look, we said, "Would you lick it?" You know, a while ago. Not that long ago. <laughs> You know, so we can hi- we can hypo. I'm just asking you how many. It's a hypothesis. It's a, it's a theory. How, how many? I don't know, man. I listen. I did Could you do one and be okay. Probably do one. Yeah, you know what it is. If you're like, you're could you do two? Cup? And we just keep going to get the yeah. answer that you're looking for. <laughs> You know, you know, just keep saying yes the rest of the podcast is I'm yeah up to probably yeah. yeah probably cool well you we know got what there it is, is it's when you're drinking it it's drinking drinking the the yolk part or the um the the, the white part mm-hmm. would be would be gross but it's it's when the yolk comes past your lip and you get that like the uh, semi-firm thing just like shooting you're like, like, like that and then be, it just yeah. drops down oh <laughs> and you don't know when the next one's coming and it's just boom no Ugh, good. That, yeah. That'd be the tough part for me. Oof. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> yeah. That that's I'm just like, just scramble it and put it in the pan. It. Just, just yeah. cook it and then eat it with some turkey bacon. There you go. Like what? I don't get it, man. That's dumb. It's dumb as hell. Yeah, it was from sorry, I just had to double check. It is from Rocky. Yeah. It's not as dumb as chain smoking while running a marathon, but it's pretty damn dumb. So Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> Speaking of pretty damn dumb, uh, great article in Fortune that came out uh, today. This, yeah. With this amazing <laughs> headline, uh, <laughs> Avatar 2 represents the worst business case in movie history, according to its own director, 
James Cameron. Um, Way to hype the movie. I just... Way to hype the movie. Listen, uh, I've, I've made no... There's no secret that I did not enjoy the first Avatar movie. I didn't even really want to go see it. It was a friend of mine. I was visiting him out in L.A. And he's like, hey, man, he loves movies. He's like, you want to go see Avatar? I'm like, I guess so. Jill's like, I'll pass. So I went with him. And it was the last night it was showing. And we saw it in 3D. And I remember just watching it being like, I mean, it's a movie. You know, like. It wasn't fine. a religious experience like everyone else apparently No, had. I mean, just the, the reaction. Did you see the same movie? The reaction that people had, they're like, I wish I could be in Pandora. They called it like the Avatar Blues because people felt that they were depressed because they couldn't live in this fictional world. I'm like, what are you fucking talking Why? about? This is insane. Wow. Absolutely make, insane. Yeah. I don't I don't get that. Look, I've and I've made no uh <laughs> It, it, it's no secret. I don't know what we're both trying to say, but I know there's something there. Yeah. It, there is no, it's no secret. That I've never seen the movie and I have very strong opinions on it. It is based off of what you've said. Yeah. Listen, technologically fucking impressive as James Cameron usually does is he pushes the boundaries with technology and most of the things that he makes. I think he was at the forefront of some of the stuff that we see today that makes it easier for people to act, edit and create stuff in real time. Absolutely. Um, he was 100% doing that shit back way before. I mean, he helped invent it, basically. So kudos to that sort of stuff. Listen, um, the first Avatar, it looks really good. The second Avatar, Avatar 2, looks really good. Like, just CG and everything looks phenomenal. The story is garbage. It is complete and utter garbage. Um, let, me, let me walk that back a bit. It is derivative. To put it in a more critical, you know, uh, more critic friendly way of like, it's derivative. There's nothing unique about this movie sure. at all. There's sure. just, it's, you've seen, you've seen the movie, you've heard, you've seen the story. Nothing about it is unique. Yeah. It just is. And um, that is, to me, story is always number one in my book. Can I still enjoy a movie with a bad story? Listen, I like Battlefield Earth. So, yes, absolutely. Um, but it's one of those things where if the story is just so bad that it's either hard to follow or it's just, it's, it's, it's like, you can see it coming from a mile away or whatever. Like, I just, I can't do it. Like I, I just, it, it really affects me in a visceral way. And this yeah. movie, when it came out and they, they, they did this, I'm like, how is everyone loving this film? How is this possible? And the fact that the writing was up for an Oscar, I was like, no, absolutely not. This is, should not be up for best writing. Go fuck yourself. Someone's like, it's a great, it, it tells a great story about colonialism. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's a, it's, they're trying to mine unobtainium. Like, get out of here with that bullshit. No, it's terrible. The villain's like, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> like, it's just it's so terrible. Terrible, terrible. Before we jump into the, the why this, what this article is about and, and, why it is a bad business case. Uh, it's 13 years since the previous movie came out. I, I And I feel like even though Avatar, the first one, is the highest grossing movie of all time, it was knocked off by the Avengers, but then Cameron got butt hurt and was like, mm, I got to put this, I got to re-release it so I can take my top spot back. I get it. I probably would do the same thing if I was in that position. I, I you're that close. Why not? You're also I like it. I got to build some excitement for the sequel. You know, true. But uh, I understand it was it was uh, commercially successful. But I think a lot of people, even the fans at this point, have also said, "Why are we doing a sequel?" I think this is pretty universal. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there was a pretty universal. Um, agreement on the internet of just like why hey we, no one really asked for this is am i am i off base on that i'm not sure i don't know where all these people were that loved the movie originally i i, I don't know who they are or where they exist in reality um so i don't know what their response was to it i got confused when disney was like hey we're investing a whole section of one of our theme parks we're, we're dedicating it to this film i'm like why? Because it wasn't 
a recent like it wasn't like oh this movie came out and then we've also been, it was like years oh. after the fact like by the way there's a pandora of the section of this park now eight years after the fact i'm like why and it wasn't a franchise like it took a while for them to build avengers campus but that has been a franchise for a while right. like that makes sense because it is it took a while but it's also still going i mean brand wise this- it kind of makes sense right because pandora is about wilderness yeah. wildlife conservation it goes hand in hand with animal kingdom at yeah. disney world but i still was like well this is kind of weird that they're like yeah. we have the pandora section of the park i'm like uh okay i guess um right. uh all right it's weird that they would do that and it's like there was because it, be one thing if it's like oh and by the way the sequel had come out by then too so it's like yes and it was a big hit it was just one yeah. movie big success yeah. Nothing else happening. And the fact that he's like, oh, yeah, there's probably like two or three more movies after this sequel, too. I'm like, really? Yeah. There's that much of a story to tell? Well, that's the thing that I don't. So I, I I, just I feel like it's the sequel that no one asked for. And I don't understand why. I guess I just don't understand. Yeah. I, I, well, that that then leads us into what this article talks about. I was about. like, I feel like James Cameron answers a question for you. <laughs> this article. Yes, I, I think he he asks the same question I'm asking though. Like, but but yeah, go ahead. No, I feel like he answers it with "Why not?" <laughs> well, that's, yeah, why not? It, I, yeah, he, he had said in the article, "If they're going to give me a billion dollars to make a movie, of course I'm going to fucking make that movie." Yeah, right. <clears throat> but um, at the same time, the um, the the return on an investment, the metrics that are needed for this to be successful to are break even. To break Astronaut. even, this movie has to be in the at least top four highest grossing movies of all time. At least to break even. Right. So we're talking if it makes less than $2 billion, it's not, it's in the red. Yes. Let that, that sink that in. Seem like a sound investment. Let, let that sink in as far as, you know, what that means. Like you got to be able to pull off with that. And right. And also, so long after the great success of the original, too. Like, just, it seems like a tall order. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess the thing that I'm not understanding, and maybe you can, maybe you read this differently than I did, or maybe you can shed some light on it based off of something else that you read. But it says the estimates put the movie's production budget at uh, roughly $250 million, although that figure's not been confirmed. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tide is at present the most expensive film ever made with a budget of $422 million. So look, usually they say whatever your production budget is, you double it. You double it for P&A, right? Mm-hmm. You, for prints and uh, advertising. So uh, so $250, we're up to half, half a billion dollars now, $500 mm-hmm. million. Dollars. I guess I don't understand where this $2 billion mark, where, what is he, when he says it costs a billion to make, I'm just not understanding where the money's coming from. Regardless, if he is truly saying that to break even, we need two billion. It's it's fucking. Well, insane. if he says it costs a billion to make, you got to double your budget. You right, know, but, yeah. But no, they, I understand that. But yeah. I'm saying like yeah, every other estimate put this at 250 million dollars. Regardless, yeah, no, I know. We're getting in the weeds on that. The point yeah. is, if you need to, if you, if the only way for you to break even is to be one of the largest, one of the top three largest uh, box office open or uh, box office uh, grossings in the history of cinema. You're not just like you put a movie out there. It happens to hit that. And you're like, wow, what a, what an amazing achievement. And I feel honored and, and so happy that everyone loved it this much. You're saying we have to hit that now. So now that's an expectation. That's fucked up. Because you're also me. playing with other people's Fuck money, up. too, to be basically be like. Because I think what Cameron's riding on right now is his laurels, oh, and I'm not. Sh- and for the, by the way, I'm not shitting on James Cameron at all. Yeah. I like his stuff. I like the he's stuff that he's made. Some incredible films, yeah. Terminator, Terminator a- Two, Aliens. Right. Like he's made some really fucking great films. Like yeah. they're fun. They're very fun. Absolutely. But as it goes on to say, it's like how Cameron got Avatar's green light. Um, it's basically because of his record of success. And there have been a lot of, well, I told you so sort of situations. And he, there was the, um, the first Avatar movie was initially rejected by Fox. 
And Peter Shernan, who ran the studio at the time, essentially was like, ah, I don't you know, he basically was like, is there any way to get the the you can get the kind of tree hugging hippie bullshit out of it? <laughs> Which is basically the whole movie. Um, yeah, but Shernan says that he believes that Fox passed on Avatar due to the cost. And Cameron recalled telling Shernan, you might look like a big dick if it makes a lot of money. Because he was also in that conversation referencing how Universal passed on his pitch for Titanic, which was also insanely successful. Yeah. And before that, he did Terminator 2, Judgment Day, True Lies. Like, he's he's made some bangers. And it's like, I, I liken this in our pre-production meeting. To talk, it's kind of like Sean Connery, who kept passing on some of the most iconic movies of all time. Like, originally he was supposed to be Morpheus in The Matrix. He was originally approached to be Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. And he's like, I don't understand any of this bullshit. <laughs> and so finally someone's like, here's another movie. And it was League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. He's like, I'll do it. And it was, he fucking hated it. The movie sucked. And then he retired. He gave up. He's like, I don't fucking understand this shit. And he just quit. And he, you know, that was the last movie he ever did. And so I think a lot of this is, I think people are like, well, James Cameron's doing something. He's, he's had a string of hits, which is flawed logic, by the way, um, to, to be able to pull this off. I think people, it's a common thing where, you know, if you're, if you're like, oh, I'm going to like, we'll take it with stocks. Like, oh, this stock always does well for me whenever I invest in it or whatever, right. you know, or if I take this whatever out on it, oh, it always does well. That's, that's, I forget what it's called, but it's, it's a fallacy in that like, oh, this, this basketball player is, he's, he's on fire. He keeps hitting threes. So I bet he'll hit the next one. It's like, that's, there's, it's just statistics. It's just right. either he will or he won't. Whether or not he's made the last three is irrelevant. It's just, it just is. It's just, that's how it is. So, um, but I, I, I'm, I'm blown away by the fact that he can go and be like, yeah, give me all this money because, you know, I'm, yep. I've got the track record to prove it. I was like, okay, I mean, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. Well, he's, and so the other argument he makes is in this, <clears throat> and I got to find it again in this article, which I'm, I'm of two minds on this argument. He says, uh, you know, we don't put it all in a pile and light it on fire. We're going to give it to people. If the studio agrees and thinks it's a good investment as opposed to buying an oil lease off the north of Scotland, which someone would think was a good investment, why not do it? So if I can make a business case to spend a billion dollars to movie, I'll fucking do it. Um, mm -hmm. So basically he's saying that, look, they're going to pay me to make this movie. I'm going to employ thousands of people and thousands of people are going to get a paycheck and have be able to feed their families and pay their mortgages. And they're going to have like, I'm helping with this. That is a valid point and i i do understand that argument like that's totally fair i would much rather have it going to those people than for some other nefarious whatever but those to to phrase it that way makes it sound like you either pay me you either give me this money or you know seals are going to get clubbed and, and you know drown in oil like you you can't <laughs> it's not that binary it's yeah. just not you know you could take that money and you could employ many more people if you were to invest in, there's a lot of up and coming storytellers. Look, Drew and myself excluded from this conversation, though we would take some money. Of course. Uh, <clears throat> you know, from, from a leaving us out of it perspective, there's a lot of filmmakers that have a lot of really fucking cool ideas uh, that have amazing stories that need to be seen and deserve to be seen. And you're giving a billion dollars to one dude. Sure, he's got a track record, but man, like, what if someone took that billion dollars, a studio took that and said, look, we're taking this and we're going to finance a thousand new filmmakers, you know, and we're going to split this evenly. And like that would the, the press alone from that would be out of this world. You know what I mean? People would flock to see those movies because that would be something that'd be shaking up the industry. People would would wouldn't know what to do with that. They'd be all they would eat this shit up. Yeah, I think you it's, would. Would you make the same return? I don't know, but man, your goodwill, your like, I do think that you would. It would it would pay uh, it would pay dividends down the road. Yeah, I mean that would be cool. I mean it, it'd be great if you did some sort of like contest or whatever. Or fuck, let's let's make this grosser. Let's do a reality TV show where people come in and they try to compete. <laughs> You know, yeah. they go through the whole process and at the end you get funding from this to yeah. fund your thing. Like it, it happens. You build promotion for it. You can 
you know, be gr- you can be really gross and earn stuff off of the the viewership off of the reality TV show. But you know, find a way to do that. Like at the end of the day, listen, you swing for the fences, big risk, big reward. All right. So, yeah. Uh, but again, it's one thing to be like, hey, you know, our we're looking to you know, seven hundred fifty million would be break even for us. You know, on this, that's a huge. That's a huge deal, but to be like, if we want to break even, we got to we got to hit over two billion dollars. That's yeah. What are you hoping is going to happen here? So, what's the upside on that? Because Avatar has made two point nine billion dollars after its re-release. So, if you hit two billion, what's your return going to be? Your percentage isn't going to be that great on it. Like, right. you know, if you can spend a hundred <clears throat> million and earn a billion, that's a better rate of return. Then two billion and oh, we got two point five. Woo! Like, yeah. really? That's well, the other thing is too. Like, if you're banking on the fact that okay, like this is going to launch the franchise because he's got five total films locked and loaded, like up here in the old noggin, ready to go. And so, if you think this is going to help launch a you know multi billion dollar franchise, well, let's take a look at the success rate of franchises that go five deep it's not wonderful you know what i mean like james bond i I, quality wise i can think of a few that have that have done it the avengers pulled it off but we'll see if that keeps going because there's been a lot of up and down on the quality of of what's been happening with them recently bond has made it successful fast Uh, and furious fast and furious but outside of that like harry potter keep going keep proving me wrong I was like, uh, what else we got here? I was like, those are just the top two off the top of my head. I was like, and also just quality wise. Like, I would argue that now I, I understand there's a difference between quality and, and box office numbers. Like, a lot of people will pay a lot of money for mediocre, you know? We've seen it happen over and over again. Again, Fast and the Furious is a great example. Like, those movies aren't for us. I would not call them epic or, or I would not call them uh, wonderful movies, at least by my, mm-hmm. you know, are they bad? No. Are they great movies? Are they fun? Would, sure. Uh, sure. I would say they're not great. And, you know, I think they're getting more and more absurd. You know, um, I just don't think if you're banking on this being a franchise thing where you're going to make your money down the road. I don't know, man. Like, are you going to have to invest this much money in each of them? That's a like, lot. That's a lot. I don't know. That's a lot to do. And that's, up that's front. a big gamble. I mean, I think. You know, maybe like, I'm wrong with the with the five deep return. Like maybe maybe that's not I mean, a great example. You're talking like you're spending like rings of power kind of shit right now. You know, hoping that you know, right? What was that sixty million an episode? Yeah, you're just like, all right, cool. Not to mention that doesn't include the rights that they had to pay to get. You know, right? The rights to do that, like yeah, this, is, this is that's a big. That's a it's big expensive, one. man. Yeah, that's fucking expensive, bro. I hope. Uh, I guess hope what I'm happens. saying is you can't you can't guarantee that that a franchise is going to pay off. It's it's a uh, true, especially with a franchise when you've got 13 years in between the two the first two movies. Like, is there the timing on this a, one is weird for me? Like, is when, there a theme for this anymore? When when they when they were like the the sequels coming out, I'm like, why? What? <laughs> <clears throat> right. more uh, it's just it's the distance between the stuff for some reason i get irrationally angry when it's so long after and they're like guess what now it's time i'm like what are you what have you been doing and i'm sure it's yeah. complicated and everything but it was like when sin city came out great fucking film and then like eight years later it's like get ready for the sequel i'm like what that that that's that shit's gone man that, that the right. ship has sailed there's no way people are like, man, I've been waiting for Sin City to come back. It's like, what? No. What's the timeline of the sequel for you? What do you think? What do you think the cut the threshold is? Uh, but typically, it can we can, uh, you know, argue you know dates here and there. But like in general, what's the what's the threshold for? I a gotta sequel? say, if you want to capitalize on it, especially if it's good, if it's a good mm-hmm. film, a sequel, it's gotta be less than five years or less. It's gotta be. Yeah, it just I would has say, to I would be. Say five- Five years is the top of the scale, I think, for because me. Because especially nowadays, people's attention spans are so short. Like, you just can't. Yeah. People talk about that all the time in politics. There's like the news cycle can't. It's it's People are just like, huh? What happened yesterday? This new thing's today. People do not hang on to things at all. And you're like, yeah. 13 years ago. In the previous generation, there was a movie that came out. You know, like. 
<laughs> Think about that. When that movie came out, there was a child that yeah. was born that is now 13 years old. Absolutely, yeah. Like that's absolutely that's that is when you put it in that perspective, you're like, Jesus, what were we waiting for, man? <laughs> right. And all that a movie that was, I say, it was financially irresponsible for them to wait this long because it was such a smash hit. Where was the we got to get the second one out? And I'm sure there's a story that I just don't know. I'm sure there was something happening. But who who was like, we should take our time with this? Because I feel like right. that was a giant mistake. That was the top grossing movie of all time. Still is after, you know, after the re-release. I mean, it was unbelievable the numbers that it did. Also would argue that its numbers, I think, are slightly inflated because of 3D. Because that movie was one of the first yes. movies that was designed with 3D in mind. As opposed to like, put on your glasses for this big monster reveal. It was like, no, the whole movie, which I also have to say, right. I watched the movie in 3D and I was like, you know what? This actually it lends itself to 3D because James Cameron was thinking about that. So... Right. I think because of those prices, they got a little more in their gross. Still, massively successful film, and like, let's wait over a decade. It, yeah, I don't know. I say five years or less. I think that's probably about the max. I because whenever they come on after that, I'm like, where have you guys been? What's going on? Right. What are we doing here? Where where do we where do we miss the opportunity to keep this story going? I don't get it. But that's enough about that. I think it's time. Is it time? Oh boy. Let's hope uh let's hope I choose the right the right one here. Which one is it? I don't know. Ah, is it? Play it. Hello. We're back. I think what throws me off about that one is it just stops. Yeah. Like There's explosion and it's like and we're yeah. done. It, and it's just yeah, there's no big uh, there's no big ending. It's just gonna like and you're welcome. Hello to seven in the chat. We were just talking about our D and D adventures earlier in the show, and you came Oof. up and how Justin gave you great praise for being such a great team member in the party. So thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, seven, I'm glad you're here because uh, it's now time for one of our new favorite segments, which is anime out of context. I haven't done this in a little while. And I've got change up this time. We're not doing Bastard. This time we're changing over. We're doing uh, My Hero Academia. So um, I would argue... You know what? I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to front load this. But we're just going to... Justin's eyes are getting so there's excited for four, me. There's four characters on this. Yes. You're going to do good. two and I'm going to do two. All right? All right. Justin, you will be playing... Uh, Gran Torino and Kenji Suragami. All right. Gran Torino, all right, is an old, cranky, and sometimes forgetful hero who is allowing Izuku, Izuku Midimoria. Midimoria to intern with him. Okay. Midoriya, excuse and me. Then, That's his name, Midoriya. Who's the other one I'm playing? So you're playing Gran Torino and Kenji Suragami. Kenji Suragami, chief of police for Hosu. He is a normal. He has a normal. <laughs> Finish that sentence, Justin. What's it say? Uh, he has a. <laughs> he has the normal body, but the head of a dog. That's right. There we go. Goblin <laughs> plays it. Welcome, buddy. I hope you're ready for some great anime out of context. We're glad you're here. Oh boy! I will be playing Izuku uh, Midoriya. And also Shoto Todoroki. Uh, Midoriya is a compassionate first-year high school student who was trained to become a hero. And Shoto is son of the second highest ranked hero endeavor and an, an emo kid. So, let's get ready to rock. Are you ready, Justin? Uh, ready as I'm going to be. All right. Izuku Midoriya and his two classmates sit on hospital beds recovering from a very difficult battle with a dangerous villain named Stain. They are chatting about the good they did the night before, saving civilians and stopping Stain. I almost read that as Stalin. The door to the rooms opens, and in walks Gran Torino. Gran Torino! Kid, I've got a lot of complaints for you. Oh, s sorry! But before that, you've got a visitor. In walks a tall figure, probably six foot six, in a three-piece suit and tie. They have a body of a man, but the head of a dog. 
host chief of police, Kenji Suragame. Suragame? Chief? (laughs) Oh, you can stay seated, Wolf. Wolf? You must be the the UA students who brought down the hero killer, right? Yes. The chief of police came all this way. Why? God damn it, Doug. You knew this was coming. Fucking read it. Regarding the hero killer we arrested, he has fairly serious injuries with birds and broken bones and is (laughs) receiving treatment under strict guard. Wolf, since you are UA students, I'm sure you already knew when superpowers were still becoming the norm, the police attached high importance to leadership and standards and made sure quirks were not used as weapons. And then the profession of hero emerged to fill the gap. Woof. For an individual's use of force and power, they can easily kill <laughs> actions that normally would be appropriate to denounce. To be accepted officially is thanks to early heroes who followed the ethics and rules of profession. Woof. Even up, <laughs> even against the hero. Even up against the hero killer for uncertified individuals to cause injury with their quirks without specific instructions from their guardians or supervisors is a clear violation of the rules. The three of you and the pro heroes endeavor man manual and Gran Torino must receive strict punishment. Wait a minute. No one realized that the hero killer had appeared. Are you saying we should have followed the rules and watched people get killed? Are you saying that as long as it turns out all right, it's okay to bend the rules? Isn't it a hero's job to save people? That is why you're not a full-fledged hero yet. Goodness, what are you being taught by UA and Endeavor? Woof. You dog! Hang on a minute. Hear him out till the end. <clears throat> <laughs> well, that was the official opinion of the police. And the punishment would would such, and the punishment and such would only happen if this were all made public. Woof. This were if this were made public, you would probably be applauded by the public, but you would not be able to escape punishment. On the other hand, this is a bit upper handed. But if it is not made public, the burn scars would the burn scars would support Endeavor being the hero who saved the day, and it would end there. Woof. Thankfully. There were very few witnesses. This violation could be crushed here. Woof. But this would also mean that no one would know about your good judgment or achievements. Which would you prefer? Personally, I don't want to be the one to find fault with promising young ones because of a big mistake. Woof. I'm I'm sorry. Please take care of it. Because of the unfairness of adults, you will not be able to receive the praise you would probably have gotten. But at least... As someone who also protects the peace, I can say thank you. Ah, Please start with that next time. Todoroki. And scene. This was my least favorite one. Really? (laughs) This was your least favorite one? I, um, here's the thing. I don't know what it was. I didn't process a single word of what I said. I don't know how you couldn't. None of what I said made a lick of sense to me and, and i don't that know if is that's- why i fucking do this because this to me is <laughs> chef's kiss just what did i i gotta go back in here now well here's the best part too is <laughs> I the way you I play do. the characters always yeah. throws me off because <laughs> kenji is like a very serious character who will then say woof and that was, I was telling you this the other night where I was watching a scene, I go immediately go, well, we're going to be doing this for anime out of context because mm-hmm. in, there's no preface for it. It's like, oh, here comes the chief of police, Kenji Suragame. It's like, it's a dog. I'm like, huh? Huh? And he's like, hello, woof. And he literally just says woof. And he's like being really stern. He's like, regarding yeah. the hero killer we arrested, he had fairly serious injuries with burns and broken bones and is receiving treatment under the strict guard, woof. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? You, I, I like, I liked yours better because he was like, "Woohoo! I'm a dog!" Woo-hoo. He's just like, "And we're doing this, woof!" Because <laughs> they even know. call it out. <laughs> Midoriya goes, "Woof!" Like he just said, right. "Woof." So oh. what? It, man, I don't. 
I get it. You know what? I'm not even going to try. That was great, Doug. I don't even, I don't understand what I said. Uh, what questions do you have, Justin? None. None, none. questions. Did we yeah. nail it? Did we did, think we did? I just, so he, wait. So for an individual's use of force and power that can easily kill others. So these kids are learning how to be heroes. Correct. And they went too far with their powers. But they hurt the right person. Is yes, that right? Correct. That's enough. Yeah. I get it. So in this world, 80% of the planet has some sort of superpower or they call them quirks. Okay. And But just because you have a quirk doesn't make you a hero. You actually have to go and get training and then get like a provisional license and then get an actual license to be like able to do hero work. Program. Exactly. Got it. So okay. these students saw something bad happening and they acted, but they didn't have a, a license. So they're like, even though you did the right thing, you don't have, you know, you shouldn't be doing this because, you know, if you were to hurt somebody, you know, that could be really, really bad. You, you don't have the proper training for it. So they essentially were like, but we did it. It's like, yeah, just because it worked this time doesn't mean it's okay. Like, you can't do that. So essentially they had to make a choice. Do you want to take the credit for this, but then be punished for doing work without a license, or do you want to sweep this under the rug and only your mentors will get in trouble? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, but you'll never get credit for it. So well, that, that I only have choices. one thing to say to that. Mm -hmm. Woof. Woof. Indeed. Woof. Well, that was highly enjoyable for me. Um, <laughs> and especially what I liked about this were the long stacks of dialogue, which I'm like, Jesus well... Christ. I know which part I Justin's going to be playing. I scrolled down to that one page and I just saw half the page in blue and I'm like, God damn it. I was like, oh yeah, there's two of those. So have fun. <laughs> and you're like, what am I saying? And I'm a dog? <laughs> yes. It's like, I have to. I ha This has to be Justin. So That's fair. And look, you made the right decision. I don't blame you. Thank you. I, I needed yeah. to hear that. I, bl I believe in myself too. So, <laughs> And that was anime out of context. Holy shit. Holy shit indeed. Oh, that was fun. I, it's it's good. Sometimes I really second guess myself on this, um, because it's uh, it, again. There's things that make sense visually. Yeah, you love the anime, by the way. So do I. Actually, I'm in season five, seven, um, and I know it's not done yet. So I I know I'm walking into depression as I get to the end of season six, and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, it's not done yet. But still, I'm enjoying the shit out of it. Um, but there's just these moments, and I told Justin this in our production meeting, last night um, I was watching this, and Natalie was like, oh, cool, I want to watch for a little bit. I'm like, yeah, fuck it, come on up. It's You know, you could totally watch this. And Jill came in, she was charging her phone, and it was like a little bit before bedtime, and I had promised Natalie, I'm like, yeah, if you you know brush your teeth, you can watch a little bit of it. And she's watching it. And again, this is the middle of season four. Natalie has no idea what's going on, and Jill's just sitting there watching it, and she checks her watch. It's like 821, and then she checks her watch again, and it's like, 824 she's like oh my god it's only been three minutes and she's like looking at the tv looking at me like what the fuck is happening i'm like yeah i know right and she goes i have no idea what's happening i'm like of course you don't it's the middle of season four why would you you have no clue right. and this is bonkers batshit crazy anyway so yeah yeah she sees like the worst possible things nothing it's not in the middle of amazing action sequence it is like bonkers dialogue crazy things are happening i'm like i get that because i've watched the show up to this point and she's like what is happening i'm like i know i know what? you're basically <laughs> we're living anime out of context right now yeah. in our personal lives and i'm here for it yes and she's lucky because she gets a vision at least she gets a visual and she doesn't just have to cold read it from, yeah <laughs> from, a, from a, a word doc yeah it's amazing with zero understanding yeah it's 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 pretty goddamn amazing it was very enjoyable to see that happen oh, so but that was one man. of those things where i'm like this is the bastard show not a very good show at all so it's fun to pick yeah. it apart i'm like i would argue my hero academia is a really great show and uh, it just has these bonkers moments where you're like huh i've got a couple more that i wrote down that i'm like this will be fun too out of context well and that just shows that it doesn't have to be a bad show for it to work for anime out of context mm -hmm. the whole point of this segment is the fact that i have no clue what the fuck i'm doing yeah because the thing is, as you're reading all that, I'm like, yeah, that checks out. And you're like, I don't know what a quirk is. Who the fuck is Endeavor? Like, what right. is this? Like, why are there burns on people's bodies? Where'd that come yep. from? Like, what? There's a guy named Stain. Is it like the band? You know, it's been a while. Like, what? You know, what's happening? Yeah. yeah. 
But the whole time I'm like, I know exactly what this means. <laughs> so again, I throw it out to anyone else. If there is an anime or a scene from an anime that you would like us to do, reach out to us. Hit us up on our social medias. Uh, join our Discord and in the Anime Out of Context channel. You can head down there. Make a suggestion of uh, you know what it is. Do us a solid. Write up the scene. Write up the dialogue. Give us a little bit of direction. Just a little bit. Tell us like kind of maybe how you want us to play the characters or whatever. Put it out there and we'll fucking do it. Slotty did that for us with uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and it was awesome. I was like, I have no idea what's going on and this is a lot of fun. I have no idea how to play this and that makes it so much fun. So, And I'll also say this, like we always say, if you want to either take our rereading of this and dub it into the clip of this and send it to us, or if you would like to just straight up reanimate it, based off what you think if you want to do your own anime out of context take our reading of it and my complete confusion and then you reanimate it having no context for what it is and i'd be i, I would love to see what that looks that like that would tickle so, my fancy yeah yes very much so Woo. good stuff all right justin what do you got to recommend this week well we didn't get to the topic but i am going to recommend uh on disney plus limitless with chris hemsworth uh this is the kind of docu-series show that he put together, six episodes, about an hour apiece, um, and he is on a journey to figure out how to live longer, healthier, better, and just have a, a general overall better existence while he's here on this planet. And um, it uh, it's a great show. Uh, I was, like I said to Doug off mic, and I've said in, in other reviews of this that I've given to people, each episode... Uh, culminates in some stunt. So like the first one, they talk about stress. The second one, they talk about, you know, whatever. The third one or the fourth one is about eating and fasting. And then, so there's different, there's different uh, topics that, that uh, they cover each one. The fifth one is uh, mindfulness. It's the brain one. And so they go through all these different topics um, and it all culminates in like a big stunt. The first one with stress, he has to walk across a crane atop a, thousand foot building and he's got to figure out how to handle his stress as he's doing that so the stunts in all of these episodes are entertaining they're there for entertainment value they serve to get you to there's a uh we see that this is the finish line we need to get to the stunt um what's interesting is all the in-between stuff in the episode when they really when they talk to the doctors and they go through the prep work that he's going through and they talk about the, the physiology inside the body and what happens and chemicals kick in your flight or fight response and your adrenaline, your cortisol, like all this other stuff. And they talk about how that affects you and where it goes. It's, it's absolutely fascinating to learn about how the body reacts to certain things, how what you can do for your body changes those reactions. And then uh, they'll usually peel off each episode and they'll follow someone um, so one episode he talked about how cold can better like extreme heat and extreme cold can benefit the body. And they, uh, they follow and they interview someone who was in a horrific accident. She fractured her leg after she got her leg fixed up. There was just this pain, nonstop pain in her bones. And she does, uh, ice diving now where she'll cut a hole in ice and like do free diving where she holds her breath and just goes under there. And she goes, the minute that I put my legs in this water, was the first time since my surgery that I stopped feeling pain. And it's just, it's therapeutic for me. And so you get to learn the science behind it. You get to peel off and and learn about someone or a group of people who are embodying this topic that they're talking about. And then you get to see this big entertaining stunt at the end. All in all, it's a very cool show. And I would, I would strongly suggest uh, watching it. There's a few things from the show that I'm going to be trying to implement into my daily routine now that hopefully will help me with a few things so nice i think it's a cool show very cool yeah um i would recommend uh the anime that we just did animated out of context from which is my hero academia uh i subscribe to crunchyroll um you don't have to there's a free version of it if you want to you know watch stuff on there with ads i prefer not to and uh i've been tearing through uh my hero academia it's it's one of those shows where there's times where you're like, dear God, this is overly dramatic. But also there's these moments where you're like, God, they really are heroes. You know, they're just really doing the heroic thing. And it just, it tugs at my heartstrings for some reason. I'm like, look at him being what 
we all hope we could be, you know, in the face of yeah. danger and, and everything. They're like, I'll give it my all. And they just go and they fight and they try and they're trying to reach the, for their dreams. And it's, it's also like just sort of the Japanese motifs of, you know, honor and even people who are bitter allies can still respect each other for yeah. like what they're trying to do. And it's they're like, what are your ideals? So I'm like, what? No one's ever asked me that. Like, what are your in the middle of a fight? What are you? What do, why do you want to be a hero? What are your right. ideals? Explain them to me. <laughs> I'm like, what, what the fuck? Um, Such a direct question. But there's also just like a shit ton of characters, which sometimes I'm like, I don't give a shit about all these characters, but then they make them like, make you care about them. I'm like, okay, yeah. it's kind of cool. Uh, but there's times you're like, Jesus, how many episodes is going to be this one class that they're in? Like, there's just this one training. I'm like, Jesus Christ, no wonder this is six seasons long. Spent half the season being like, this is this one drill that we're doing with the whole class from everyone's perspective. It's like, fuck. You feel uh, like you're in the class yourself. Taking yeah, I'm the like, class. oh my God. But I love it because you actually get to see the growth in the characters. Like as they try, right. they work harder, they develop their skills, they get stronger. You're like, oh, cool. I've come a long way. You can really see it. It's, it's a fun show. I really enjoy it. It's also one of those ones where I'm like, I could probably watch this with Natalie and she would, she might enjoy it. So it's not like super... Yeah. Super over the top, or you know, there's some darks, you know, <clears throat> ideas and stuff like that. But it's it's interesting. It's pretty cool. So it's always fun to find those little nuggets where you're like, oh, cool, something I can share. Because mm-hmm. at her age right now, I'm sure that's it, it doesn't always line up. So it's fun when you find the animation those in it too would easily appeal to her. It does. She's like, what are you watching? She's immediately like, what is this? I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah. And I'm like, I'd be happy to start it over with her and be like, let's watch it, and see if you like it. You know, so it could be fun. So there you go, My Hero Academia. It's on Crunchyroll. Check it out. I recommend it. Well, that, my friends, is the show for today. Please remember to check us out on all our social medias at MindGap Podcast. Uh, be sure to check us out at youtube.com slash MindGap Podcast. Um, it's a, you know, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, it means a lot to us. It helps us out, helps us out a lot. Um, and um, yeah, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash MindGap Podcast. Check out our merch at redbubble.com and join our Discord. Link in the description down below. And be sure to check out Justin as well. That's right. On Instagram, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, all the pla- uh, pod, no, Good Pod, Podbean, all the places you can find and consume podcasts. You can find and consume us. And then do the thing where we ask sharing, subscribing, like, rate, review. All those good things make us feel good, and they go a long way. And then 2 eighth.com and 2 East 8th on all social media. And finally, as always, loveandimprovfilm.com and Love and Improv Film on Instagram. I would lick the poll. It's true. There it is. That's that's how you can help us. Um, well, I want to say thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you didn't kill your family over the Thanksgiving table unless they deserved it. And it was ritual combat to become the head of the household, which some people do. I get that. But we appreciate you listening. And uh, we look forward to being in your presence again soon. So until next time, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Chad, thank you. Listeners, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.